Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we are going to do some fountain pen conversation. Well, me just talking to myself, but also to you. Um, it's a good day to talk about fountain pens because it's always a good day to talk about fountain pens. Today I figured let's do an old fashioned what's currently inked. I'm only gonna go through those pens that are new and weren't really talked about that much last weekend and or my last video look at this these two are almost the same color i've had this one longer than this one but i have been using this one i would say or at least i touch it a lot more than this one although they're both currently in use so i'm gonna move these off to the side today I'm gonna do my writing samples in my newest acquisition. And this is the Traveler's Notebook Starbucks edition. I had a lovely friend who currently lives in Japan. She bought this for, I don't think she, I think she initially bought it, but then um, decided to sell it and didn't, like open the packaging or anything and then reached out to me if I wanted it and I said yes of course I don't have this one this is the brown color and I feel like the texture of this one is a little bit different I do love it when you first get traveler's notebook because it's just so it's like stiff and it's very like textured to me I don't know, it's this weird feeling that I really like the stiffness, but I also like it when they're worn in. So right now I'm really enjoying the stiffness and it just feels really good in the hands. So we're going to change up the paper again and I'm going to use a super lightweight paper and I'm going to use the Yamamoto Robiki paper and I don't hear enough about this paper in general. Uh, in the fountain pen community. Um, according to what this paper can do, it is very good with fountain pens, but also with pencil and ballpoint gel pens. So it's overall good paper, and it's rare that you find good paper that can handle almost everything, right? So we're going to see how some of the pens react on this paper and then we're going to go into the super lightweight paper because I haven't done I haven't messed with this paper in a while so I do have some journaling in here um this paper is what it says on the front super lightweight it's very thin there are a lot of pages in this notebook and I have yet to fill it up. I've been using it for almost two years now, I think, since I initially got it. And one thing about this paper is that it's very sensitive to hand oil, so I definitely need my glove. And it can be a little bit difficult to see the inks. If you don't have dark inks in your pens, you're not going to see um, the ink on this paper very well. It's going to be really hard. And for those of us who are getting older and like to use darker, more saturated inks because it's easier to read and see, um, I would suggest to use that on this kind of paper if you have one of these inserts. Now, this is a temporary or a special edition insert, so it may not be available anymore, like hard, really hard to find unless you were to buy it maybe from someone on Etsy. But we are going to open these both up, I'm trying to find an empty spot that I haven't used. Okay, so just know that I am sitting on a yoga ball, so you might hear that like weird rubber sound. <laughs> as I adjust my seating throughout this, throughout this video. Okay, so let's start with my first pen. I had to ink this one back up because it's just, 
I've been thinking about it for a while. So this is the Kilk Celestial and it's made with the um, some real silver accents. It has a little weight to it, but it writes so well. It's very comfortable. I've had questions where others have asked me, well, do you still like your other Kilk, the Kilk um, Laterna? And I do, but if I had to pick between the two, this one fits my hand so much more because of the way it's shaped, so much better. Um, and it's so much more comfortable if I were to compare the two. And that's just because of the shape. The Camera Laterna is more, um, it's not as curvy and it's just more squared off, I guess you could say. Um, but it writes really well. The nibs are well tuned, which I think they do in house. And yeah. So I decided to put this ink in here, which may surprise you because it surprises me. It is fall, and so I figured maybe I need some some warmer colors, kind of. <laughs> so this is actually diamine. I hope you guys can see that. Can you see that? Seems like. So this is Diamine Oxblood. And it actually, I don't know. The inks on this paper will dry quite like dry. <laughs> they tend to be a little bit drier and not as juicy as if it were a Tamoy River. And I feel like this paper, the Robiki, reminds me of um, Cosmo Airlight. because my letters are a little bit fatter. The paper is a little bit more squishier, but the colors are really vibrant. I will say that I do like this Rubiki note paper better than the Cosmo Air Light. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of dry on this paper as well. So you can see how much thicker it's showing for a fine line between the um, Traveler's Notebook insert and then the Robiki. Okay, so next I have a pen that I haven't, a pen from a brand that I haven't inked up in a long time. That is a Pelican. So this is my Pelican M800. And I got this back in 2020 um, when the prices overseas for the Pelicans were significantly, significantly lower. And it was such a great deal. Like this was the price of a M400 at the time when I got it. This is the blue stripe. I guess I could write that here, which is not any special edition or anything. Um, it's part of their regular line. And the ink I have is 
Van Diemen. Eucalyptus. Regna. Now also, this paper does better with nibs that are thicker than the fine nibs. However, right now, I am in to fine nibs. So, I think I am okay with writing with this pen for a while. I don't write it capped because it adds more weight. This pen is significantly heavier than the other sizes, except for the M1000, which I know I would never want to have because this size right here is enough for me. It's kind of dry on that one, really dry. So one of the things I don't like is that they, right here, you could see the color discoloration and that happens every single time. I mean, it's like it oxidizes so quickly even after I clean it and wipe it down. Um, and I found that a lot with Pelicans. I don't know why it does that. But it does. Okay, so my next one is the Pilot Custom A23, which I haven't written with in, I don't know, six months. Have I even used this this year? I can't remember. So, I decided to put in a really bright ink And this is in the smoke body color. You can see the ink slosh around in the right lighting. Um, but I do want to get a um, fine. And I think I might even do that with the amber because I do want to try the amber as well. So the ink I'm using is Krishna. Moon Glow. And you can find a lot of Krishna inks at Pen Chalet. And it's this really pretty blue, bright blue, but also dark at the same time. And it does help keep my pen pretty lubricated. Yeah, look at how much thicker it is.
but writing on this paper is very smooth. It's actually smoother than this paper. I think there's just a little bit of texture on this paper and um, sometimes because of the texture, the ink doesn't always take in, like pull in um, the, the ink doesn't like seep into the paper as well because of all the texture on it. Okay, so let's get in to some other pens. So I talked about this on my Instagram and I was watching a YouTube video from Gourmet Pens and I love her videos and she was talking about this Jin Hao. So I got the Jin Hao and it does not disappoint. Everything she said in that video uh, is so true. So this one is the Jin Hal X159. And I've had this inked all week. The nib is humongous. It's really big. And um, I decided to put in a black ink and they have different Jin Hao body colors this one's just the black and I was able to get this off of Amazon for about for about $13 I wanted to try some, like find another body color but they don't have them available and I also wanted to try the extra fine so this is a fine and it writes really well on to my river paper right now you can see how it seems like it's struggling um, and that's because of the grittiness of this paper this is typically how my pens show some of these pens have recently been inked up so they have a lot of ink in the feed this one um, when it's when you're writing on it on the smooth surface it doesn't skip or it doesn't feel like it's really light and I have Aurora black in here. And this is a really good dark ink. If you're looking for a dark black that is kind of wet. Oh, so then let's try it on. So this is how it writes when I'm writing onto my river paper. And again, it's a fine they only have fine and extra fine on Amazon. But it writes so smooth, it's girthy, so it's very comfortable to use for long periods of time and it's lightweight. So it doesn't give my hand, it doesn't make my hand tired over time. It's just so comfortable. This is my first Jin Hao. Okay, so next is a Platinum. And I haven't written with my Platinums in a while. I was looking for a small uh, nib Platinum so that I can write in a paper that wasn't too fountain pen friendly. And I was looking for a dry ink. So. This is the 3776 Century. And I have a fine. 
you can see how it looks really light on this paper. And I'm using a uh, Diatramentus Brown, which is just kind of a basic brown, um, but the nice thing is that it is permanent, so it's not going anywhere. And it writes really well on like the size of the nib and this ink writes really well on other papers that may not be fountain pen friendly. So let's see how this fine writes on the Rubiki. You can hear a lot of feedback And it kind of feels really feedbacky. Um, I knew that would be very dry. So this was fitting exactly how I needed it for um, at the time. And so that will take me some time to get through. Okay, so last but not least, but possibly becoming my least. Uh, so this is my very first Twidsby Mini and it's just in the black. I've had this for, I wanna say, closing in on five years, maybe six years. And I use this thing a lot for drawing. Um, I would also have it inked up for long periods of time and it would just, it would clean out fine, really well, and it wouldn't get gunky or anything. Well, I don't know if you noticed this, but there is a, uh, the cap is talking. It's like when the bottom heel of your shoe is flapping around. Um, so I was just trying to lift this up and this cracked all the way through here. What's crazy is that it's not affecting the flow of when the pen is capped, um, it's not affecting, like it's not drying out the pen nib. So the part where it has torn up here, you can see it's kind of, it's not even, it's kind of lifted up, is not affecting like the airflow, I guess. There's no air going through the cap to affect the nib. However, I am still really upset and I've been looking for a replacement, which means I need a replacement just cap because this is bothering me. It makes this whole thing very loose and it's really frustrating and I'm really sad when it happened. It happened like a couple days ago as I was journaling. I spelled diamond wrong. Um, and this is an extra fine, which is why I would use it for drawing. However, you can see it's writing and it doesn't dry out really quickly, even as I was just demonstrating what's going on the past two minutes. It just writes really well for even extra fine. And the ink I have in here is a very smelly ink. It's the Faber Castell 
sorts. Uh, how do you spell sorts? Sorts with a Z. Sorts black. Okay, so let me know if any of you guys have this ink and if it gives off some type of like aroma. It's not too terrible, but literally the moment I uncap my pen, I can just smell. I can smell the ink. Um, I did get the ink from Amazon. It's one of their very inexpensive. No, actually I didn't get it from Amazon, but you can find it on Amazon. I ended up getting it from a retailer, Endless Pens. And yeah, it has an interesting smell to it. I don't know. It's kind of strange. Um, so yes. Oh, let's try this on my Roby key. So I can write with this without it being capped and I can just set it down so it doesn't annoy me, but I, um, can't talk while I'm trying to write Twisby. Diamond Mini. Um, this is the extra fine. I do like this ink. It's very lubricating and it's slightly different than Aurora Black because Aurora Black has like a little bit of a sheen to it. Uh, just subtle. Not as much as Obsidian from um, Lamy, which is really shiny, but this one is more matte and this one's a little bit shinier and it's very lubricating on the nib um this again? There's no E at the shorts. Let's go that long. So yeah, it is quite, quite wet, similar to Aurora Black, but it does have an interesting smell. And this pen has made me sad. It makes me honestly not want to buy any more Twispies. Um, because although I've had it for five years, I was hoping to have it for at least another five years. I've always, I haven't used this pen in a while. Um, and I'm just surprised that like, after just trying to pull this back a little bit, it just breaks off. So <laughs> I'm sad. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I actually want to replace this pen. And I... I, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. I don't think that there is a replacement just for the pen cap. And so that means I'd have to buy the whole pen again, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I might just, I've been thinking about using one of my other Twisby minis, which is a, I have two more and they have different nibs on them, but this nib writes so well that I might just switch the nibs and just leave it at that. Um, so yeah, these are my pens. I also have <clears throat> a new addition, my final pen, which is this lovely guy. And I just got this the other day. I'm going to share with you the unboxing and then, um, and then we'll get into the writing sample. It is the fifth anniversary uh, set of the Minori Sailor Pen. And it's actually nicely wrapped.
And then we have a pamphlet with what we're going to look at today. And there is more information in this envelope on Sailor, the warranty. And then we have the beautiful pen. So this is the fifth anniversary Shikiori. There's a lot of um, information about it. So they say that the design of the pen depicts the scenery of rice paddles whose colors keep changing through the four seasons. The shape is reminiscent of a single grain of glossy rice and the coloring is based on the image of the fresh rice and rice ears. Minori means beautiful or bountiful harvest in Japanese. Okay, so last one, writing sample. I haven't written with this one as much, not more than what a half day's worth. This is my sailor. Nineteen eleven standard or small, and this is the Shikiori fifth anniversary. It is quite toothy but I like it. And this is the Minori, the name of this pen, Minori. And I got the basic medium fine because that's all they had. I would have preferred a fine, but this is actually, it feels a little bit more finer to me. And I think it's because it's not the large where you get the 21 carat, it's a 14 carat. And I have noticed differences between a 14 karat medium fine versus a 21 karat medium fine. And I have BPC Grand View Avenue. Midnight Horizon. Okay, so I'm gonna have to abbreviate that because I don't have much room. And to check, it's actually quite wet for a medium fine. Okay, last one. Let's see how thick it gets for this paper. Very comfortable to write on with this medium fine nib. I don't even know how to abbreviate anniversary. And this is the Minori. Colorway, it is a medium fine, and I have BPC, which just stands for Burnham Pen Company, and it's better when it's abbreviated because it will take a lot of room. And this is. Grandview Avenue Midnight Horizon Kind of dry but pretty wet on Tamoy River paper. I really like how 
the end of the um, converter kind of sticks out a little bit. So that's why they have it white to kind of replicate the whole theme of this, which is uh, rice growing within the four seasons. And um, I think that this blue is actually a really good, really good fit for this color colorway. So one more thing I did get, and that is this guy. I got this from Amazon, and it's actually a glass dip pen. Uh, my last glass dip pen broke, and that's why I ended up getting the Kakimori dip pens, which are fine. Uh, they're really great, but they the line can be inconsistent because of the way you write. So I am always adjusting the way I write. And so I need something a little bit more consistent. And with the dip pen, you're just gonna get one type of line width. And so I decided to look for a dip pen that would have a cap and this one does and it fits the purpose I need it for because my last one broke right at the tip. Um, and I actually didn't drop it. I put it away and something else hit it and broke the tip off. So I couldn't use it anymore because it became really scratchy. Um, I don't really have tools to fix it. So anyway, this is the replacement and it works just great. Um, and it's like an extra fine writing experience. And I've written with it a couple times to uh, just see how um, it does. I do usually write with it in my ink swatch booklet. So this is writing with it here. This is the new Sailor Shikiori fifth anniversary color. And just trying to pick out what color I wanted to put in to this pen. And I ended up selecting this one, which is like a deep blue. It's not bright. Um, but it's like a deep blue and has a little bit of gray to it, similar to this one, but more on the blue end. So that's the color I decided to go with. And that completes my video for today. So let's put these side by side. Definitely a difference in the width of the pens. Let's zoom out just a little. And yeah, so this is great. I still gotta work my way through these papers. You're definitely going to see it on the back side because the paper is so thin, but it doesn't bleed through. So uh, it may be in your best interest to use this one page at a time and maybe put something on this side, like a, I don't know, stickers or something. But I've done it both ways. I've used both sides and then I've only used one side. So it kind of depends on how I feel. Um, if I am using two sides, I will try to use different nib sizes so that I could read and nib, nib sizes and nib colors. Um, this insert is really great for a traveler's notebook. You can stick it in here. It's not as wide, but it's a great like jotter and you could put it in between or in the front and, um, I think it writes the ink on it reacts really well. There is no feathering, no bleed through. Just um, you can see where some spots where you may slow down on your writing, and the writing, the ink kind of pulls a little bit, but definitely no bleed through. So I wish they made these inserts wider and more like traveler's notebook inserts, but yeah, it is what it is. 
There is quite a, a lot of paper in here. I've used this for my pens and trying to get them organized. Didn't work very well, so I just kind of used it as a scrap notebook. Um, yeah, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I did get a question about my last video on my Baumkuchen bags and those you can get from baumkuchen.com. Yeah, if you have any more questions on where you can find stuff, just let me know. Um, I will either try to give you a link or send you a message where or even talk about it in my next video. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this long video <laughs> and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.